Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and today we're continuing with our second video on section 8. Section 8 is kind of like a chapter 8 and it's uh, all about chemical bonding. So let's get started with our second video. Uh, we're at the top here of page 1 of today's notes and uh, we're just getting ready now to talk about ionic versus covalent bonds and uh, things like dipole moment and polarity of bonds and then overall polarity of molecules or formula units. So at the top of our notes here it says, so what determines whether a bond is ionic or covalent? In order to determine that we have to take a look at the differences in the two atoms or ions electronegativity. So we have to first come up with a general trend of electronegativities for the periodic table. Now we've talked about three periodic trends already, right? We've talked about atomic radius, ionization energy, and we've also talked about uh, electron affinity. Well, the electronegativity trend is our fourth trend. So what does it say here? It says electro electronegativity trend. Electronegativity values range from 0.7 all the way up to 4.0 on the periodic table. Now generally the values for these guys will be given to you. There's no way to memorize them all, but we can also make some uh, generalizations about the uh, overall trend just by drawing, I'm gonna draw a little periodic table here and show you that the general trend is that electronegativity increases from bottom left to top right. So that means the guys at the top right, things like fluorine and chlorine, these guys are very good at attracting electrons to themselves. I like to think of it as a tug of war. So if you're in a tug of war, things like fluorine and chlorine are really, really good at drawing or attracting electrons to themselves in a bond. So the bullet point says underneath electronegativity trend, it says to decide if a bond is ionic or covalent, subtract the two electronegativity values and compare the result to the following chart. So at the top of page two of our notes here, give me a second or two as I draw a little chart for us. And this chart is gonna tell us if a bond is ionic, polar covalent, or nonpolar covalent. Now, ideally, those lines, those two lines in there would be parallel, but so the bond type is going to be inside the box, and then the right-hand side, we'll use the scale. All the way at the top is 100% ionic bond character. All the way down at the bottom, 0% ionic bond character, and then we've got the borders at 50% and 5%. The left-hand side, I'm identifying the uh, those little uh, points there. The very, very top is 3.3. That is the biggest difference in electronegativity you can get. And then zero would be a difference in electronegativity between like say two hydrogen atoms or two carbon atoms where the electronegativity values are identical. Now, as we move up this chart, okay, it's increasing polarity. So 100% ionic bond character at the top, 3.3 electronegativity difference. Way up there, you have extreme polarity to the point where they're ionic bonds. In the middle, right, between 0.3 and 1.7 are polar covalent bonds. Anything under 0.3 electronegativity difference is a nonpolar covalent bond, all right? So let's do an example with this chart in front of us and see how, how we do. So example, bond polarity. Order the following bonds according to polarity. We have an HH bond an OH bond, a CLH bond, an SH bond, an FH bond, and an NaCl bond. Okay, so what we're going to do is we would use our textbook or we could use the internet. If you just type in electronegativity values and go to Google Images, you'll find a periodic table with all those electronegativity values from 0.7 to 4. So use your textbook or Google and look up each atom's electronegativity value. Remember, they go from 0.7, I think 0.7 is cesium. It's somebody on the bottom left. It's either cesium or francium. I think it's cesium. And in the top right, fluorine is 4.0. Okay? So 
and noble gases are not going to be all that high. We ignore those. Noble gases like to be by themselves. So then subtract and compare using our chart above. So I'm just drawing out those bonds again and spreading them out because I'm going to write values underneath. Hydrogen and hydrogen, I didn't even really need to look hydrogen up because hydrogen minus hydrogen is going to be a zero. So you can see that the F there is 4.0. The oxygen is 3.5. These are very electronegative, electronegative, and they're in the top right. So HH0, OH 1.4, CLH 0.9, SH 0.4, FH 1.9, NaCl 2.1. Just look at the NaCl. The NaCl electronegativity difference is 2.1. That's above the 1.7 on the left-hand uh, column. So this is certainly an ionic bond. It is the most polar, whereas HH electronegative electronegativity difference of zero is going to be nonpolar covalent. All right, top of page three of our notes, it says when bonds are polar, in other words, when bonds are ionic or polar covalent, those are the two types of polar bonds, with the ionic being the most polar, they have what's known as a dipole moment. A dipole moment means I can draw a direction of polarity across a bond. So a dipole moment is a direction of polarity. I can draw it across a bond. I can draw it for an entire molecule, an entire formula unit. So this is shown by an arrow with a little plus sign towards the tail. So as an example, HCl, okay, well, I think we just saw this in our last sample problem, but Cl is very electronegative. With that dashed line is a bond, it's going to attract those two electrons better than hydrogen. So we get an electronegativity difference there where most of the electron density is towards the Cl. That's why we have a delta minus. It's partially negative charge, not a complete charge, because we haven't transferred the electron to Cl. This is still a shared electron pair. That's why you see a dashed line. So that's just a cloud of electron density, and this is shared very unevenly, this, these two electrons. So partial positive charge on the left, partial negative charge on the right, and then we can draw our dipole moment towards the direction of the most electron withdrawing atom Cl. Now look at the next example. I have NaCl, and Na has a full plus charge. Cl has a full minus charge. Well, in the last example, we determined this was an ionic bond where the electrons are totally transferred. Cl is so much more um, electronegative that he actually breaks the game of tug of war and rips the electron all for himself, getting a full negative charge, leaving Na with a plus, plus one. All right, next part I want to talk about is polarity and dipole moments. Um, I've already mentioned that with individual bonds, as we just saw, but these two ideas, polarity and dipole moments, these ideas can also be applied uh, to the entire molecule, in the case of a covalent compound, and to an entire formula unit in the, in, in the chance that it's an ionic compound we're talking about. So as an example, page, page four of our notes at the top, it says, example, for each molecule or ionic compound, indicate which ones are overall polar. Overall polar, not just the bonds, but the molecule or the ionic compound as a whole. Is it polar or not? So for each molecule or ionic compound, indicate which ones are overall polar. In other words, they have an overall dipole moment also show the direction of the individual bond polarities. All right, so building off of what we know on how to draw bond polarities, we're gonna do it for the entire molecule or ionic compound. Now HCl, this is the third time we've seen this. H is 2.1, Cl has electronegativity value of 3.0, the difference is 0.9. If you look at the chart, 0.9 falls in the range of polar covalent bond. And in this case, HCl, drawing the bond is like drawing the entire molecule. So this is an easy one. Overall, the way I've drawn it with the H first, Cl second, my polarity goes to the right as far as drawing my dipole moment towards the more uh, electronegative atom Cl. And because I can draw an overall dipole moment, the molecule is polar. Now, CH4, carbon 
electronegativity value is 2.5. Hydrogen, the electronegativity value is 2.1. So the difference is 0.4. According to the chart, this is a slightly polar covalent bond. But in reality, CH bonds are essentially nonpolar. At any rate, now we're going to talk more on how to draw structures later on in the course, Lewis structures and Vesper theory. For right now, you, you probably would connect them like this. And it looks like two dipole moments are canceling each other. The two horizontal dipole moments are both going in. They cancel each other out. The two vertical dipole moments are also canceling each other out. So I'm drawing four dipole moments as far as bonds. But overall, the individual bond dipoles cancel each other out. So there's really no net dipole moment. I'm unable to draw a dipole moment overall for this molecule because the additive effects of all four cancel each other out. So this is a nonpolar molecule. All right. And again, we'll learn how to draw that properly in, in later sections. C, NaF, sodium fluoride. Na, 0.9, fairly low. Fluorine, 4.0, fairly high electronegativity value. 3.1 is way beyond 1.7. This is certainly an ionic bond. Ionic bonds, we'll learn a little bit more about this later on. We can't draw a dashed line. A dashed line means shared electron pair. Here, fluorine fully rips the electron away from sodium, leaving sodium with a plus one charge, and then fluorine gets a full minus charge. That's why you didn't see any partial negative or partial positive. Certainly, that's a polar. Ionic compounds are polar. H2S. H2S, H is 2.1. We've seen that quite a bit. S is 2.5. So this says it's a slightly polar covalent bond. It's just over that 0.3 in our chart on page two. Now, SH, I've got two SH bonds, and we're going to draw dipole moments towards the more electronegative sulfur. So we got partial positive on each H, partial negative on sulfur. I put a two delta minus, but a delta minus is a delta minus. Now, later in the section, we're going to learn why that the following, um, the way I've drawn it is, is actually correct. Now, why do I know that's correct? Why did I just randomly draw it that way? Well, later on in this section, we'll learn how to draw Lewis structures, okay? But for right now, it just shows you down there on the bottom right. If I were to have drawn this thing as like a, a horizontally, HSH, I would have ended up with a nonpolar molecule, right? And that's not the case. Overall, the additive effect, the way I've drawn it, is a dipole moment going that way. So overall, if I can draw a dipole moment for the entire molecule, it's polar. Now, again, that the bottom of the screen there where it says HSH and it's horizontal, there's a reason why that's an incorrect way to draw it. So I'm kind of teaching a little ahead of myself here is in that regards, because that would have predicted you to say this is not a polar molecule, and that's not true. More on that in uh, later videos. And if you like the way I do my handwritten chemistry notes, uh, chemistrynotes.com is my website. I've got a whole bunch of general chemistry notes and the full course for organic chemistry notes. So uh, hopefully you'll stick around for the next video and I'll see you when I do. Thanks.